The ordinance created department, as, as Stephen might have been going over with you, it doesn't need to exist. The Department of Labor Empowerment is a charter created department. It needs to exist under the charter. Right? The theory would be is that do we take the general manager of the, of the community development department and make that person the general manager of both departments? We would actually have to resubmit his name to council. Council would have to approve him as the general manager of CDD slash Dunn, right? So there would be a confirmation process. Or do we take the general manager of the Department of Neighbor Empowerment and seek him to him as the general manager of this consolidated department? And given what we know about the picture, we're thinking that, I mean, it's kind of an irony because really you're consolidating CDD into Dunn legally. Right, so it's like taking Exxon and consolidating them with the corner filling station. Right? In terms of size of program, cost of program, et cetera. But obviously it's not that it's just the corner filling station because there's 90 neighborhood councils, leaders. So in some ways there's, there's some equality as it moves forward too because of the activists that are in the city of Los Angeles. So the proposal is to actually do a consolidation between CDD and Dunn. Uh, and the initial feedback we got from the city attorney's office is that it in fact is legal. Is, is legal to do it. So it is something, you know, I, I was hoping that Jane would be here to kind of share that information with you, but it is something that, that uh, as people have looked at it, as you look at how it's structured under 514 and 913 and 516, right, and how functions move, it is something that's legal, but is it the right thing to do? And is it gonna be politically successful? So under section 514, which you guys are gonna become very familiar with, in order to do uh, this kind of department consolidation, bring CDDs, you know, um, to bring CDDs, all of CDDs um, functions into this new entity, CDD done, right? You need uh, 10 votes in the city council. It's basically, this is a mayor's ordinance. In a mayor's ordinance, you need a two thirds vote of the city council for that to go forward. So the question becomes, are those 10 votes there? And where do you stand, ultimately, in determining what is in the best interest of neighbor councils and best interest of the unit that will be created here or keeping it the way it is now in terms of moving forward in Los Angeles? So let me just give you a quick picture of CDD. Is that all right? So right now, the Community Development Department is, in my opinion, one of the highest functioning departments in the city of Los Angeles. Now that may not be true for the future, so people will say this is not about making a decision for now, it's about making a decision for the, the long-term future. But in CDD, you have two major boards that oversees some of the money that comes in. So you have the Workforce Investment Board that oversees, right, this year $90 million in Workforce Investment Act funds for doing job training, doing rapid response, you know, uh, for a fair, uh, for the city of Los Angeles. Think of unemployment offices. Guess who runs unemployment offices? The city runs unemployment offices. Most people don't know that. There's just three left from the employment development department in terms of the unemployment offices that they run. We have work source centers. Those work source centers, we have 17 of them, are the primary way in which people connect up to training and jobs in the city of Los Angeles. In addition to that, there's gonna be a new board that will be the LA Communities and Families Board, right? And this will be, this is being created right now, there are transmittals going out. 
and it's going to be made up of the Commission on the Children, Youth, and Families, the Community Advisory Board, and the Citizen Unit on Participation are being consolidated into this board, and they will have oversight of the $95 million in the consolidated plan of community development block grant dollars and community service block grant dollars and some additional you know, housing dollars. But they are going to be the policy body that's helping us think smart about anti-poverty efforts in the city. So let me get, bring you down to, so just so you see how this stuff is structured, um, there are, under Richard Benbow, who's the general manager, you have three assistant general managers. Two of them will be new on March 1st, right? You have Robert Sines, who's responsible for operations. You have Rhonda Gaston, who is responsible for admin. And you have Manny Chavez, who is responsible for performance, for planning, and for grants. Right? And those three functions are the key pieces of the puzzle. What do they get in terms of funding? They get, like I said, 90 million in Workforce Investment Act dollars, 95 million Community Development Block Grant dollars, and they also have an economic development function. <coughs> so they have all of the Section 108 loans. We have, I think, $100 million in Section 108 loans out to businesses this year. They have empowerment zone loans. They have the new recovery zone, uh, recovery bond loans under the Obama administration. But they basically have a lot of loan products that they participate in economic development for the city. Those are they. they you know, there's uh, LA Business Assistance Programs. There's three of them throughout the city. There are different pieces of work. So let me give you some programmatic pieces, and so it kind of get you a sense of where the Office of Neighborhood Empowerment would attach. <coughs> So in CDD, from the general manager, you would also have the connection of Commission on the Status of Women, which would quite honestly be a shell of a commission plus one staff person supporting with no staff, general funded staff infrastructure. And their job would be to actually interact with, they do a bunch of work on women in the trades and not tra traditional careers on this front. They do a lot of interaction with anti-poverty work. And so it would be a standalone, uh, and, and they would basically be a forum for a number of pieces of work. You would also have, over here, the um, uh, Human Relations Commission. And you also will have, under this structure, the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. These would be the policy bodies. Bonk with LA Community and Family Board, Commission on Status of Women, Human Relations Commission. Those are the policy bo boards that they work with. They had a domestic violence task force, but they also put about two and a half million dollars on the streets on domestic violence under the consolidated plan, right? And they had a task force which will roll in with the Commission on the Status of Women. All right, so those are the, the big pieces. So let me get you to the programmatic pieces. So what this is primarily is a, a um, department with subject matter expertise, but primarily operates in a contract management role to nonprofits throughout Los Angeles. It's passed through federal dollars to nonprofits. That's the primary work that it does. So what does the structure look like? You have work source centers. You have one source centers on the workforce side, you have 17 work source centers, 13 one source centers, and then on the CDBG front, you have family source centers, which we're putting out on the streets. I did a, uh, with, with Ken